So they, they sent you some uh, Cab Franc roots to they're plant? They gave me the finished yes. plants. They were yeah. the roots, yeah. You still have them here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, you see, and that's, that's good for people to know that a big company like that it has that humanity side to them. I think a lot of people think St. Michelle's is this big giant industry that kind of taking over, but that's a nice perspective. Now, they've, they've been really, with everybody, they've been, I think, as good a partner as you could have. Had. You don't think? They're advertising and they're, and they're, you know, they've been, I'm not sure about the last few years, but for years, they held it, they got this one in the prize for the best large winery. Yeah, I remember that, yes. And they've been number one all the time. And, and of course, they went in with a pretty big pocketbook. Yes. That tobacco company has laid pretty low, but I think they, they dictated that, a lot of that. Uh, advertising? They didn't want any bad advertising. Right, right. Well, I mean, it's like anybody, you want to invest in something, you don't, doesn't mean that there's a bad side to it if you want to invest in a winery. Um, but you've, you pretty much have done this whole winery on your own, haven't you? You've never had any investors in it? Well, I've got a partner, one partner. Yeah. Tim the Cook. And, uh, Tim Cook? Tim the Cook, yeah. Okay. And uh, he's been my partner since... Oh, let's see. it must have been uh, 82. Okay, Tim D. Cook? Yeah. Okay. And he's kind of just been a silent partner? Yeah. Yeah. He's been the best partner I've ever had. Well, that's he, nice. He, he's a doctor. Mm -hmm. And he told me right off, he said, I'm going to depend on you 100%. Whatever you say, that's the way. Yeah. And well, that's he, nice. So did you ever foresee uh, being a 70, 80,000 case producer? No. <laughs> like Mickey said, I, he thought we were number eight or something. In the state of Washington? In the state of Washington. Wow. That's impressive. Yeah. And then, see, we don't just do a bottle of wine. You sell bulk juice. We, to... we, we ship fresh juice back to Wisconsin. And mm -hmm. Minnesota, uh, and, yeah, and uh, Michigan, Michigan. Um, uh, you know, we had this one customer that we send 13 tankers a year, about in Wisconsin, about, about 5,000 gallon tankers. Wow, uh, Riesling, yeah, and uh, stuff you can't grow Riesling, Pinot Gris, Chardonnay. No, 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 we don't have any Pinot Gris, okay, and, uh, but Chardonnay and, and uh. Reasoning mostly. Mm -hmm. And a little worse to me. Yeah. I got home And you send some juice to Japan too, don't you? Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, well, again, Dr. Clore brought that on. He was up. He took a, a year of sabbatical back in the, oh, it must have been maybe the 70s, early 70s and spend in Japan working at this agricultural college. And he met this young Japanese guy there and got real, got to know him real well. And so the kid come to Prosser and worked a year. Uh, and uh, still got to know him better, you know. And, mm -hmm. and then he came over. His family had had a winery in Japan for, I don't know, uh, three or four generations. Okay. And uh, so he came over there in uh, like 89 or 90 looking for, to buy some, well he was buying Concord stuff. And he wanted to buy some, some uh, American uh, wines. And, Vitis vinifera. Yeah. And so uh, Dr. Clore uh, 
took him around the world, and nobody wouldn't even talk to him about shipping him in. Really? And so he called me up and said, Bill, I got a friend here. You want to sell him some wine? I said, sure. I'll. So <laughs> that we we sent him ever here since then. Wow. And uh, Greg just got back in with Mickey from Japan. Yeah, I heard that. And uh, met with the family and yeah, yeah. And now the the young families took over. The, it was uh, two brothers. Their dad and, uh, and uh, these two brothers and their families, and now the the kids. And one one of the kids that's the president of the Warner now. He finished his college in Japan and come over to the University of Oregon for a two-year course in English and, and some yeah. other things. And and so when his dad come over to visit every year, he'd come up too. Now he's the president of the company. Yeah, and, you've seen a lot of changes. Yeah, that's that's amazing. So you're kind of an international company, really. Well, now we're selling one into Denmark. I Denmark, heard. And yeah, that's pretty new, and the boys are pretty excited about it. Yeah, I bet it's exciting for you too to see this hard work you put in back in the day now turning into this. Oh boy, I'll tell you, I'll never remember. I'll never forget. Start now, and I'm team. Boy, money was tight. Yeah. There in the late 80s, early 90s. And particularly for the wine stuff, they didn't think we could do it. Right. And the first two or three years, I was kind of operating on my credit card until <laughs> we could get some done. And that's how I would, but I was shipping this fresh juice out each year. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of saving our bacon. Yeah. And Less labor, quick turnover. Yeah. Yeah. So we're pretty fortunate. So Rob, and, and so Rob. In 93, they had a terrible time back east. Uh, winter cold and frozen the vines, New York, Ontario. Mm -hmm. We shipped 43 loads of juice that year. Wow. And. Uh, our growers, we had so many guys they couldn't get sold to fruit. We had a big crop, first big crop. Sam showed about the only people that, and they handled all they could, but it's still a lot of juice in them. Mm -hmm. And that's a. And then we well, got we got a credit line from the bank, and that thing helped you out easy after that. But yeah. boy, I'll tell you, it was pretty tough. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. You've come a long way, a long way. How do you feel about, uh, have you given much thought to things like global warming? Have you given that much thought, or yeah, do you see I that? Yeah, I about a lot, but I, you know, it's a scary thing. Mm -hmm. Do you see it affecting Washington? I see it affecting us less than a lot of people. Mm, yeah. You think that's why some of the California boys are coming up here? Maybe. Maybe. You know, actually, yeah. And, uh, it's California is in a, such a terrible drought right now. See, they're, oh, not, yeah. they're not going to get enough water to water a no. whole lot. Of, and so it's a, and that's the one big thing we have here, you know, sitting here in the Columbia Basin, we've got the Grand Coulee with this huge. Yeah, water's not water a problem. Source, yeah. You know, what? Uh, we actually, such a high percentage of our water comes out of those Canadian Rockies that even in a bad year, you still get melt done. When the weather gets warm, things start melting. The flood stage, that's when we need the water. Right. So we just fit real good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, California, part of that is that they're overpopulated. Sure. And you think they'll ever go to desalination, you know, taking water out of the ocean? They have to. They should. Yeah, they have to. Yeah, um, I haven't read much about whether they're, where they're going in that direction, but of course, in some of those like Saudi Arabia and places like that, they've been doing it for years. Yeah, they'll have to do that. Yeah, but see, so so far they're getting so much cheaper. We, uh, my wife and I, 
been about 10 years going down to Yuma, Arizona every winter. In the last three or four years, our health got so bad we decided we'd better stay closer to home. Yeah. But anyway, they were doing a big project when we were there uh, last year. They were building a big reservoir. Oh, uh, over about halfway between uh, Yuma and El Centro, mm -hmm. this big canal that goes from the Colorado to the whole El Centro Valley. Mm -hmm. Well, it leaked a lot of water, and they had uh, actually uh, lined it all with concrete. But there was a lot of water they couldn't use then that was going on in New Mexico and dumping into the yeah. into that uh, into the ocean there that were and that little inlet comes up through there. Yeah. Anyway, they built this big road reservoir about uh, twenty six acres, twenty five foot deep, and lined it with plastic. And all that extra water they were dumping there, and then San Diego was getting it mm -hmm. from domestic water. Right. And uh, so that was dealing with a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they'll do it when they have to, but it's just so much more expensive. Than, and then, I'll tell you, that, I never saw a, like a waste of water that there is there in the in that area. These guys are still doing flood irrigation. This is down in Arizona or in California? In Arizona and yeah. California. Okay. They be flooding the deal and, and a lot of runoff. And, and so a lot of it's mismanagement. Well, they're just now coming to their senses and putting underground drip in right. with this with this new um, uh, system, you know, where you, uh, I can't think of the name, but where you know exactly where you are in the field, you know, that they can lay this line in right, and then go ahead and do their various operations and not damage the line. And okay. And they probably use about one twentieth yeah. of the flood irrigation and does a better job. Right. Well, they're going to do that on more and more land to save the water, and, and they should. Yes, they should. Absolutely. We've been doing that up here.